Isn't it rather irresponsible, though, to try and oust a prime minister that the country voted for, maybe not as much as you would have liked and not as many, but they did indeed vote for her as leader of the party without a replacement? Well, I think everyone you know, is entitled to have an opinion on these things. That's what we're there for. And the prime minister herself said she serves uh, for as long as we want her uh, to. Um, we did have that election, as you point out. It was not the outcome that everyone would have um, hoped. Uh, we did hope that subsequent to that, we'd have, if you like, a relaunch, hopefully a successful conference this week, um, perhaps a united cabinet. Those things haven't really happened. And so, you know, the number of colleagues who feel it's time for a change has been growing. But I should point out that was an entirely you know, private and uh, confidential behind the scenes um, thing going on. Um, so I was surprised to see that party whips decided to brief the newspapers it was happening, uh, which is the thing which has prevented it but from that being. Seems very uh, naive, it seems very naive, though. It seems very naive, Grant, to, to, to think that this sort of thing isn't going to get out in this day and age because people manipulate, not least politicians, uh, manipulate the situation for their purpose, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, and you were manipulating the well, situation yeah, behind yeah, the may, scenes may, to try and gather uh, enough uh, support to get rid of, or at least send a, uh, have a leadership uh, competition. Well, look, I think everyone's entitled to their um, view, and uh, obviously there is a system there where you can write to the uh, chairman of the 1922 committee. That's the way you formally do it. Um, I guess uh, colleagues were trying to do it in a slightly more informal way, perhaps to save the embarrassment uh, for um, the prime minister in uh, having colleagues come and approach her, but in private. But uh, that wasn't to be, which is odd, because actually number 10 knew about this list and had asked us to um, be private about it. But there you go. I, I think it's perfectly legitimate for people to have uh, views about this. The truth is we did fight an election which didn't turn out as uh, was hoped, threw away a majority in the process, and unsurprisingly, um, it's then been quite difficult to hold things together. And we, we saw that this week and even through the summer uh, with the Prime Minister's own cabinet, who have okay. not exactly been singing from the same hymn sheet. OK. There's a lot of people, though, that watched that speech and thought, it was really her fault. People get colds. You know, it wasn't her fault that the prankster came up on stage. She got through all sorts of people, including the security. It's not the vast majority of people who are on the list have been on the list from way before uh, whatever happened in the speech. It's not to do with the conference uh, speech in particular. Uh, the conference itself, of course, the policies there, but actually before that, um, during the summer and indeed the, the failed um, election campaign. So it's actually about a lot more than that. Secondly, I don't think it is uh, right or proper or even possible to, in advance, get people from different views and viewpoints within the party. For example, on the issue of Brexit, some people are yeah. Brexiteers on this list, some people are strong Remainers, and it's not possible to simply get everybody to agree on uh, a single candidate. It's perfectly right, therefore, to have a democratic election within the party. We've got a very good system for electing new leaders, uh, and that's what the people on this list wanted to see, a democratic uh, free uh, election to make that decision in the future. One of the things you said is you have to contact the, the leader of the 1922 committee in order to put forward this uh, as an idea. And Mark Pritchard, who's on that committee, has tweeted this morning saying what you're doing is both cowardly and inappropriate. What do you, what do you say to that? I would say some people who are in public saying those things are in private saying completely different things, Mark. So who, who are the people then that we aren't seeing, that aren't brave enough, that aren't being as brave as you, uh, Grant, and standing up and putting your head above the parapet and saying, look, I am going to be the face of this lift? Who are those people? Who are those politicians that are cowering in the, in the shadows at the moment? Well, look, it's for other people to come out uh, and say it. This list does include five former uh, cabinet ministers. It includes uh, other former ministers, one of whom spoke up yesterday, as, as it happens, um, and uh, many other um, uh, backbenchers. So, you know, it's a very broad list, but it's not for me to uh, out them, as it were. It's for them to say. The, the whips know who some of these people are because mm. they've been contacted, they've been told by Would it be easier uh, some of for you if they were willing to put um, their heads above the parapet like people. you have? Would it be easier to actually build momentum on this list and get to the 48 uh, MPs that you need if they were willing to say, look, I'm on the list as well? Uh, probably, but uh, look, it's up to individuals. And, you know, in the end, uh, people like me who haven't gone down that formal route of writing to the 1922 chairman to request a leadership election, uh, and we're hoping that we could actually have that conversation and save the embarrassment. Uh, obviously, people like me will now 
uh, do that, I imagine. I certainly will. But uh, it, it's up to each individual. There's no, you know, this is not some uh, planned thing where today we'd come out well, and say it. As I, I say, you're, the, you're, a very the nice, you're a very nice man. You're a very affable, chatty man, uh, Graham. Uh, you know, you've been on the show and you're, and you're always easy to talk to. But you're playing this down as though it was a little dinner party chat where you were discussing the state of the nation. This is the Prime Minister and you have said you have a list of 30 Absolutely. people who want her to go. This is a big thing. So we have to talk a little bit about details. Or do, were you just chucking it up and, you know, how many names do you have? Are you close to the 48 needed? What is really going on? It feels like you're slightly trying to play it down. Well, look, um, first of all, it is the most serious issue. You're absolutely right about that. This is about the Prime Minister of the nation. And I think that anyone dispassionate looking at the situation uh, who really um, just is prepared to strip out their own personal positions says, my goodness, we cannot go on like this. And that includes an awful lot of ministers in this government. It is the clear, obvious, rational thing to think, given that the situation at the moment. Um, secondly, the details that are out there, so I'll uh, say it, are there are five former cabinet ministers. There are about 30 people on the list. Some have already contacted the whips. Many have not, including myself, um, but will now. Um, so, you know, that's the, the scope of it. It's not for me to, uh, to, to, to name them. If they want to uh, go on record as one former minister did yesterday, then they, then they will. As I said, we wanted this to happen um, behind the scenes to give Theresa May the opportunity to decide uh, on the process and the timing. Uh, of it, um, but uh, let's, for heaven's sake, let's not, it is serious, you're right, let's not go around pretending there's nothing wrong, and you'll hear plenty of interviews that pretend that this morning. Politicians notoriously don't start doing things without having a plan in mind, so who would you like to see as the leader of the party? Because if you're going to turn around and say we don't have anyone in mind, then surely what you're doing is just unbelievably irresponsible, creating all this turmoil at a time when we'd surely, with Brexit negotiations at such a finely poised balance, we need stability. Who, who would you like to see as the new leader? Well, for, for start, unless you've been reading different newspapers over the summer and this conference, uh, the turmoil's already there, nothing to do with, with, with this. Secondly, um, the list by its very nature is made up of a very broad cross-section of the party, so there are Brexiteers, well, let's quite go strong personal. Brexiteers You've said several times everyone's entitled Remainers to their personal the views. List. You so, keep saying that. So what's your personal view? Who would you personally, never mind everybody else, like to see as the next Prime Minister? Because you made it clear in your personal view, well, it's not Theresa May. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it has to be somebody who has the uh, authority and credibility, which Theresa May had after she was initially elected as leader. And actually, you saw during her first nearly year of her premiership that that worked very well. She had the authority of the party and was able to lead it. That came through as a result of a leadership election. If you'd asked me on the first day or before that leadership election started, I wouldn't have told you that was Theresa May because I wouldn't have known. In other words, what you need is the process. You need okay. colleagues to be well, able to... Avoid come the question. Avoid you the only question. have to have a You made it second. clear today, <laughs> never mind back then but or I'm, in the I'm, future I'm after the process... Asked, what, what, what is your personal view of today you'd like to be Prime Minister? I don't... No, I, I, sim, I, I don't have a single person who I'm telling you I am doing this because I think X or Y should be the Prime Minister. That's not the reason that I think we need to change the leadership. And as I've explained to you, the process actually often comes up with a very great individual with a good plan for the country, but a vision for the country. you told us a great individual was Theresa May a couple of months ago. May. It's very confusing for us well, over here. Remember us, the voters. Well, a year, a year, a year, a year and a half, a year and a half ago. Um, and as you say, she was for the first year uh, a successful um, prime minister, who then led us into an election, which then created very large problems, which are with us to this day. And I'm just saying. A purely common sense thing. Look, we're not going to get out of this. I love um, this party. I love this country. We're not going to get out of this mess, in my view. Uh, just carrying on. Keep, you know, just carry on. Pretend everything's OK. Bugger on, if you like. It's not going to work. And that's the point I'm making today. And I want colleagues to come forward and they can put forward their ideas um, for the party. And I have absolute confidence, got a lot of talents in the party, uh, that we will come forward with the right leader to take us okay. forward.